Hi, I'm Nick Maselli. At TD Bank, we believe all citizens need to be informed about the important financial issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Sovereign Health System, a fully integrated multi-specialty community health care system. TD Bank, Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. Qualcare Inc., a managed care company administering health plans that care about your health care. NJM, auto insurance, homeowners insurance and more, with a focus on safety and financial stability. NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 college savings plan. Turn a dream into a degree. And by Verizon. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got this? There it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. How about the book on? Is this the nicest casino in Atlantic City? It's played beautiful, huh? If you could get to it. It's like Emerald City. You can see it from the, from the Garden State Parkway. You just can't get to it. It's right there. Jersey. I live in Jersey like six years now. So that's what that's what Thailand's migrate. We go Brooklyn, Staten Island, New Jersey. I just hate driving out here. You, no, not just you. Even if you go to Home Depot, what's the mission? Right, there's Home Depot. Let's pass it. There we go. I love this guy. I love this guy, Vic DiBetetto. He's a comedian. He's an actor. He's a raconteur. He's a talented guy. He's my friend. Vic, good to see you, buddy. Thank you for having me and for sharing my dilemma with rough last names. Right now, people are saying, look, I yabba dabba do was interviewing <laughs> Geppetto. <laughs> Diabetes, the, the Benedetto. You, you, I'm sure you get it all the time. Yeah, they get it all right. They, it's, they don't understand us. No. What's up with our people? Well, our people, we're, if we only stuck together, we could take over this country. But we don't. We don't. We Why give we, each other the Maloikis. The Maloikis. Why are we so jealous of each other? It's a good question, Steve. I've been trying to Why don't to we root for each other? I don't understand. Maybe. I don't know. Because when you see an Italian give this to you, you're going to give birth to a goat one day. This is serious stuff. We got to explain this to people. because This gets too inside right away. This, called the Maloikia, is means something bad is going to happen. Yes. We just put a, somebody just put a spell on you. Right. And they should have the other horn, the single horn. I think that's good luck. <laughs> you think it is. By the way, Vic is... Uh, by the way, go check out Vic's uh, comedy... Uh, you grew up where? Alabama. Yeah, right. You got the on. Alabama. You Seriously, grew up in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. And then s I moved overseas to Staten Island. Right. Now I'm in New Jersey. I'm in, uh, I don't want to say the town because I get a lot of crazy people. They're ringing my doorbell now, which I don't like that. You know, I, I go all out with my fans, but don't come to my house. I no, turn you don't to want Michael Corleone where my wife sleeps. And where my, my kids, kids play with their... Download their apps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Your comedy comes from your life. Right. It comes from um, the core of who you are. When did you know that you were a funny guy? Uh, I was the class clown. Were you? You know, I was sneaky funny. When the teacher wrote on the chalkboard, uh, and for you millennials out there, Google chalkboard. Anyway... <laughs> When she would turn around, I, that's when I would make animal noises. I would imitate teachers. And, you know, then eventually, as life went on, my friend said there's, there's a comedy club in, in Sheepshead Bay called Pips Comedy Club. Pips. Which Famous. Was, that's the boot, the boot camp of comedy. That's where the mobsters met the lobsters. And that was the only place where the owner would heckle you. Only in New York. How bad was it when you were there? It was pretty bad. When I'm on stage one night, a guy got whacked next door. And I kept doing my act. The cops are coming. I, I used to drive a garbage truck. I drove my truck to Pips, went on stage, did my act, back in the truck to finish the route. Come on, who, who else does that? I might not be the funniest or the most richest or the most famous, but there's no other comic that works as hard as me to this day. 33 years, still fighting the fight, you know? 
You know, we talked about this because you actually were performing. Um, you did a great, uh, we had a charity outing, a golf outing. You were there, and, and you were there for our friends Joe and Barry Marillo and our friends Vito were doing a charity golf outing, and, and Vic came. And first, everyone there knew you because I hate to say a cult following because it implies smaller and intense, but it's a larger following than that. It's a real following. People appreciate you. And by the way, when you also, also check out Vic, he does this great thing where he goes into a Yankee locker room. He's uh, the owner of the team or the coach of the team? The manager I'm of the, the team. manager. Okay. I say what people are thinking. I say what most Yankee fans are thinking but are afraid to say. I am the voice of regular people. Yes. And the social media. I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the social media. Do the social media thing, because here's what I want to do. The social media thing blew up for you. Right. With a piece that you did called Bread and Milk. Right. Okay? So I'm going to do this. You f f Google Vic. You see his name, that interesting Italian name, Arabato, Di Batetto. You get the idea. Google Vic Di Batetto. If you've never seen Bread and Milk, which you're about to see, tell everyone how many hits. 15 million views. It's the video. Most viral videos come and go. This one is the video that keeps on giving. It comes back every winter because it struck a nerve. When, I, when people see a snowflake, they think, oh, no, you're going to see all the idiots now in the supermarket. Got to get the bread and milk. 26 seconds that took from my house to the car got me more recognition than 33 years of standing. Ready stand to see it? I'm ready. Here it is, the famous Vic DiBattetto doing bread and milk. Let's go. Got to get the bread and milk. I got to get the bread and milk. I got to get the bread and milk. I gotta get the bread and milk. Oh my god, I gotta get the bread and milk. I gotta get I gotta get the bread and milk. I gotta get the bread and milk. They said snow! I gotta get the bread and milk! Oh my god! I gotta get the bread! I gotta get the bread and milk! I gotta get the bread and milk! Oh my god! They have it. Well, uh, what happens to people when a snowflake is coming they here in the New York area? Because people panic. This is, the, this is the, the world we live in now. When I was, a, I was born in a snowstorm of '61. It was nothing. People panic now, and that what would never happen was my wife. She didn't want to cook that night. She'd go outside, go get something to eat. I go out, see the snowflake. You know, I almost deleted that. I thought it was stupid because I got five thousand of these videos. I've been right. doing it for five years, and of all the videos that went viral, that was the last one I would think would go viral. Why do you think it did? Because it struck a nerve. It struck a nerve. That was on every major, that was on the Weather Channel. That was on The View with Bob o. Walters. <laughs> I had people call me, dude, you're on the St. Louis News Channel. It, that's, that's like the Jason of videos. It's like Norman Rockwell. Keeps it's, coming back. It's part of Americana now, I'm telling you. It's, it's bread just, and milk. Bread and milk. And some people, oh, the bread and eggs guy, the milk and butter. It's bread and milk, get it right. Get it right. I hate when people, how can you mess up bread and milk? You, let me tell you something. The other thing about you, go back to the Yankees for a second. Yeah. As an intense Yankee fan, and our, our, our president here at WNET, Neil Shapiro, a real Yankee fan as well, he, he, we, some of us get frustrated. Right. You get really frustrated. And when you look at these videos, you'll see how frustrated Vic is. Well, you can't show one of those because the language is The language great. is totally inappropriate yeah. for PBS. Yeah. Here's the thing. You got to tell me. Why is it that you've got problems with certain Yankees like... Mark the share, and why, do you, and by the way, God, I don't want to say anything because we're taping in May of 2016. We don't know what's going to happen with the Yankees, and we wish him nothing but health. Good health, Mark the share. Why do you say when he's running around the bases, he should go slow? Because he'll pull his left quadricep. These guys, they pull muscles I never heard of. The other day, last year he was out because of a toe. Aren't you embarrassed? Lie to me, say, I, I pulled my hamstring. How do you have the, the, the goons to say, I hurt my toe? Get in there, Lou Gehrig, play with fevers and broken bones. The iron. It's a diff, the iron horse. It's a it's different what world was. today, Steve. What is We're it? We're old school. It, it, everything What's is the matter with them? They're not men anymore. That's the problem. And then you get, I, Girardi, you just yell at them. Play small boy. If you see, if you see the shift, if half the, the defense is on this side, bunt it down the third baseline and get the hit. Okay. It, 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 it's a no problem. What do you get me started for, Steve? See, you know see? So when Joe Girardi said just the other day, again, we'll date ourselves, but he, see, but he said it. He said the shift should be outlawed because there are too many people on that side of the infield. What were you thinking when he said that? Finally, I agree with the guy. I love Girardi, but he... First of all, then the pitch count. 
Who cares? If the guy's the, the guy's in a Dodger last month, what, yes. a perp, what, no hitter, eighth inning. I don't care how many pitches you're throwing up. You're doing good. Why fix right. not Stay in there till uh, your arm falls off. Nah, nah. I want to see a complete game. I want to see a bunt. I want to see a sacrifice steal. Dig up Billy Martin. Let's get things changed around. Uh, now I got him going. They're in last place. Now the I got Mets going. should not be the number one team in this town right now. Stop I'm bothering. sorry. I'm sorry. The Mets it irks the hell out of me, Steve. The Mets? It irks the hell out but of we me. We have Mets fans. There's only one team in New York. That's the Yankees, and that's it. Really? Yes, really. What about on Flushing? That's Flushing. I mean, how do you play in a neighborhood named after something that a toilet does compared to the Bronx? Any Mets fans out there, if you're a fan of mine, deal with it. It's comedy. Loosen up. Well, how about this? I'm but I'm so you... offended these days. I'm going to give you another couple names. Why all these questions? I don't Because it's what I What's do. What's with all these questions? It's what I do. Look, Look I'm, I'm getting interrogated I got to get it, Don. I want you to get upset. Like marathon man. Is it safe? I don't want you to get upset, but I'm going to give you a couple names. Justin Bieber. Don't get upset. You know, I just came down for the Mark to share a thing. Now you got to get the blood going I again. I just said, I just gave you a Justin name. Justin Bieber could have been the perfect role model for our kids. Could have been. But he turned out to be an idiot. All that money, that's why maybe it took me so long, I'm 55, to finally make it. If I would have made it as early as him, who knows? I would have been an idiot like him. Well, I'm out of breath. I'm so... <laughs> You say Kanye West, I'm going to kick you off that chair. I saw you. That bothers you, too. When Kanye West got up on the stage, I know we're dating ourselves, but it still was a quintessential moment. Terry, our floor manager, you remember this. He'll always be an idiot. So when he got up on the stage, who who had the award? What's her name? Taylor Swift. She gets the award. Let the girl enjoy her moment. But he wanted to express himself. Tell her off stage. Tell her at a a cocktail party. Not appropriate what he did. Very unappropriate. Plus, he's not talented. There, I said it. I'm not, I'm not a racist. You give me, I grew up with Marvin Gaye and, 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 and Barry White in the Race 70s. Race has nothing to do with it. Exactly. Well, right away, oh, this guy said something about Kanye. Race always has something to do with it in this society. I'm just tired of it. Just, let's just look at American, American, American. That's it. He, he, he never smiles. That's another thing. You got all that fame and fame. So smile. You should smile more. Enjoy get- life. Do you enjoy life? Yes, on the inside, I am so happy. Because people are looking right now no, no. going, is Vic happy? I am the most happy guy in the world. See, when, I, this, when I'm on stage, it's a, it's a release. Because okay. when I'm home, I, my daughter rolls her eyes, my son walks out of the room, my wife shakes her head. So I just sit there like the Lincoln Memorial. I don't say anything till I get on stage like this. This out. is my release. But you also say... Plus, I'm Italian, Steve. But, but, but let me also There's say... There's no I, one between I saw us. a video where you say when your family leaves and you're home alone... It's oh a big yeah. Deal. What, what, what's that all about? When I'm home alone, because I would ha- I would say stuff I wouldn't have the the, the, the to the say. The goons means intestinal fortitude. I don't know. I'm you. not going to say the b word on this thing. I don't it, know. It just means intestinal fortitude. Go right. ahead. Well, my father used to call them castanias. Will, will you stop? I get off that. Subject. All right. What happens when you're alone? When I'm alone, I could say stuff I wouldn't have. The whatever nerve. you call it. When my family's home, it's like, like, hey, Michael, you you weren't planned. Definitely an accident. To your son? He's not home. I'm pretending. Because no, when nobody's home, I, I say stuff I wouldn't have to... You get the, courageous. Right. Uh, we're not going to your mother's for Christmas. We're going to go to my mother's. Always your mother. Make me a sandwich. Hey, Victoria, where's your friend with the big brush? She coming no, by any time this no, week? No, you can't say that. Why? You, you would say you, that's the things you say. But nobody's home. You, do you understand that the whole... So you feel free. Yes. But what happens when they come home? Oh, then I, hi, dear, what can I do for you? Can I take you to Home Depot? Can I go to Home Goods? You want to go to Ikea? What is your wife, who's actually, uh, you're taking her dinner after this, what does your wife think of your comedy? My wife is my rock. She's my best friend. Um, and there's nothing more frustrated than being a comic than being married to one. Now, here's a woman who sacrificed 33 years of staying home on weekends while I pursued my dreams. Right. And it's finally all coming together. After 33 years... It, literally the perfect storm. I'm right across the street. I, I walked the red carpet for Mall Cop 2. Now I'm doing an interview with you. I, if you would have yeah, told Mall me... Cop, yeah, real, uh, Kevin James. Uh, Mall Cop. Tell everyone. I'm in a hotel room. The phone rings. Kevin James is on the phone. Hey, Vic, Kevin James. I'm like, really? I almost hung up. Who was this? I haven't spoken. We started together in Long Island. I haven't spoken to a guy in 25 years. He says, I'm watching your videos on YouTube, and you do this guy called Tony Gaga. You got a guy. I got a guy. That gave me the idea for Gino Cesetti. Fast forward six weeks, I'm in Vegas, I'm in a movie. 
I mean, I'm off a school bus. I used to drive a school bus. If everything could stay the way it is right now, I'm a happy guy. I'm not going to lie to you. I want to be on movies. I want to be on TV. But if everything stays the way, who the hell am I to complain? You feel you're blessed? Excuse me? Do you feel you're blessed? Very blessed. Two healthy kids, beautiful wife. I got a roof. I got food. I just redid my backyard. Bread and milk made me redo the bathroom. Come on, Steve. You don't want to be anybody else. You don't want anybody else's career. No. You want yours. I wouldn't switch with anybody right now. No way. Go to uh, Vic's site. It's uh, VicDiBetetto.net. Dot net. Check them out. Um, All my gigs are on there. I'm selling out the Borgata. I sold out Foxwoods. I'm selling out theaters. It's, it's just so gratifying. I have meet and greets. I shake hands. I talk with my fans. You That's love the people. People love, people love you. Vic, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Listen, I'm sorry you got so uh, worked no, up. No, I'm I, coming down now. But I'm you, coming good. down. Your heart rate, my blood pressure is fine. Can we get the blood pressure? Uh, it's going to be all right. Because uh, here at Public Television, we care about your health. We got the blood pressure Thank machine. You, we got to bring it down. I brought up the Yankees. That's what happened. That's a, we'll be fine. It's It'll early be good. in the year. It's, it's early. early. It's early in the year. But we'll we're going to hear this later, and hopefully it'll be in first place. Yes. Okay? You Relax. Got it. And don't say bad things about the Mets. No, I love the Mets. Yeah, I know you do. I just... So stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. The great Vic DiBetetto. This is public broadcasting. Everything will be all right. Thank you. Relax. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Wow. It's a powerful stuff. Uh, Jacob Bernstein is the director of Everything is Copy, and the full name is? Everything is Copy, Nora Ephron, scripted and unscripted. Uh, your mom. Yes. Wow. Uh, now can be seen on HBO Go and HBO Now. Yes. Uh, congratulations on a well, powerful, thank you. powerful film. Thank you. Why'd you do it? Well, you know, I knew after she died that I wanted to write about her, and I also was self-aware enough to know that I wasn't going to write a book about her that was better than any of the books that she had written about herself, you know? And so I had seen the Bill Cunningham documentary, which I had loved, and I'd seen Joan Rivers, which I loved. And so you had this sort of, this little group of kind of fantastic cultural documentaries that were coming out. And, and so I sort of thought, well, what if we sort of put the archival of her uh, together with the audios of the books that she had, you know, the last two essay collections, she had read the, you know, the books on tape, and I, I felt that she could kind of narrate her own story, and it would be a way that I could kind of weave a narrative around her without, um, in a way that would sort of allow her to be the star, because I thought that... Uh, she was what people wanted to see more of and, and, and to spend more time with. And Sorry for interrupting. What made her so fascinating? Well, I think that she was, I think she was a really funny writer. I mean, I think that, I think that's yeah. a big part of it, right? <laughs> you know? By the way, I remind people. You know, just some of the body Yeah, of the well, work. I mean, and, and she, she worked on, you know, she did a huge number of essays as a journalist, you know, and, and was a, a big figure in the new journalism movement. And then she wrote screenplays, and then she directed movies. So she was able to reinvent herself uh, sort of for each era in some way, you know? I mean, I think that they flowed sort of naturally you know, each each phase of her career, but but certainly she was very adept uh, at at kind of shape shifting and 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 moving with with the times and and figuring out how to express herself as uh, as the form changed. I mean, you, she she did a hundred blog posts in the last couple of years of her life and. Uh, you know, she she really had no religiosity about form. You know, I mean, it, explain to folks what that means. Well, I mean that 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 whether it was writing journalism in newspapers or magazines or doing screenplays, I, I don't think that she had any of the kind of snobbery that gets people stuck. You know, I think that she was, uh, I think she was really open to new experiences and, and new ways of writing. That, that as long as you're writing, that's, that's the only thing that matters. And, and that to her was like breathing. Okay, so best known work, When Harry Met Sally, Sleepless in Seattle, uh, You've Got Mail, et cetera, et cetera. Being famous meant one to her. Well, she handled it very well. I mean, I, I don't think that my mother was a person who loved it when people walked up to ask for an autograph, but she certainly liked giving people advice. I mean, she was, uh, she liked to tell people what to do, which was part of what made her a very, you know, 
uh, was part of what made being a director a kind of uh, predictable route in some way for her. I think that she uh, she was good at bossing people around and she wasn't uncomfortable with it, which, which many people are, male and female. How about you? She bossed you around? Uh, yeah, I, I would say that she bossed me around. And, and, and it was also, it was sometimes less about bossing you around than it was about, uh, it, it, she was a person that doled out approval sparingly. And, and, and so that, I think, made people uh, seek her counsel and opinion because you knew that it wasn't automatic. You know, I think people are really used to being told I think people are used to having their hands held. And you know, I heard you say that on Charlie Rose, uh, and I really, it really struck me that you said she didn't give praise easily, and so you worked harder for it. Mm -hmm. Was there a part of you, is there a part of you that resented that? I, I suppose it, at various points there were, but I also think that it was part of why I wanted to do the film. It was part of why I knew that it needed to be good. Uh, you know, so it's, it's a, uh, you know, I think that you're either, um, I think that you're either propelled by fear or you're hamstrung by it. I think it's sort of how you choose to use it. And, uh, you know, but, but certainly my, my mother was, was formidable. Some of the people you spoke to in this film, I mean, just describe some of these folks. I mean, I'm just, I have a short list. Meryl Streep, Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, Steven Spielberg, Rob Reiner, and your father, Carl Bernstein, mm -hmm. a tough get. Yes, he Describe actually. Describe that. He was. Uh, it took two years. Um, uh, he, you know, my fa my mother and father did not have a good divorce. Uh, it inspired a good novel and and a movie after that. But it was um, it was a complicated divorce, and he didn't want her to. Uh, he didn't find out about the novel until it was about to come out. But he he really fought hard not to have the movie happen. And and so you know he's. Tell everyone what that movie was. It was called Heartburn, and yeah. Mike Nichols directed it. Meryl Streep. Uh, was in it with Jack Nicholson. And and so, you know, the idea that after she died that I was going to kind of reopen their divorce Resurrected records, her. yeah, it was not sort of what he was looking forward to. I think he was thinking that he might get Thanksgiving again now that she was gone. I don't think he was thinking my son is going to, you know, is 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 going to be looking through so this So what was again. it like when you did it? Well, it, it took a while. And, um, and, and, and it was, uh, you know, there was a lot of, arm twisting and psychological manipulation and no, I might not come over for dinner this week. And I think eventually he kind of got that I needed him to do it. And, um, and I think, you know, with documentaries, you don't have a screenplay in exactly the same way that you do with, with films. So, so he was sort of saying to me, well, what is this thing? And I was saying, well, I don't, I don't know exactly what it is yet, you know? So, so it put, you know, it put him in a difficult position. It was position. journalism. Yeah. So that's right. ultimately, what was it like doing that um, with him? Well, I think that it was great. You know, I mean, people say, did it provide a sense of closure? And, and no, it didn't. It provided a sense of continuance. You know, I think closure is a kind of stupid word. I think it's a kind of American. Um, I, I think what it's. What is that? Yes, what does that mean? And. Uh, but but I think that that being able to continue having a dialogue with her and and about her and to watch her, you know, on screen and read her books and read mm -hmm. her, you know, the the essay collections to read, you know, Heartburn and and the old clips in the New York Post and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. It was um, getting to hear her voice. Everything is copy means. Well, it means that everything that that you know that happens to you is material later on. You know that that. The, the boy that doesn't like you or the job you don't get, it all becomes material for uh, what you ultimately write about or paint about or uh, write songs about or do, do any number of things with. And, and I think that ultimately, beyond being an artistic, uh, you know, mantra, it is a, it's about resilience, right? That I, I think resilience even more than ambition was the central theme in my mother's life. Coming I think back, that it was fighting, the, staying in the game. Yeah. But, but, but everything is copy, but help me on this. She well, it was a thing that my grandmother said. You know, my grandmother was a screenwriter, and, mm. and uh, they wrote a number of movies like The, Dex, the Desk Set and um, Daddy Long Legs. And, and, so, and so when my mom was upset as a child or, or you know, something bad had happened, she would say everything is copy. But, but Jake, help me on this. But she didn't talk much about her illness. Her illness. So right. everything is copy. 
but that wasn't copied. Yeah, well, this is part of what the movie's about. I mean, I, I think that uh, I think that at the end of my mom's life, some things had changed. I think that everything is copy again was about. Uh, was about resilience, and the problem with a fatal illness is the minute you tell people about it, you turn into a victim. And she didn't want to be a victim. She didn't want to have people come up to her and say, how are you? She didn't want to have them telling her what she should do about her health. So it, uh, in some way, the mantra changed when it no longer uh, could be triumphant in some way. Did not want to be a victim. No, she, that, that was her her greatest fear and aversion, I think. She'd be proud of you. I, I think she would say that the movie is almost good. <laughs> you know? She, she wouldn't say that. She'd say it's really good, no? Who knows? I mean, she's not here to say it, you know? Uh, so. Uh, well, I'm, we'll let people decide. I, I hope that she uh, would Jacob like Bernstein, it. director of Everything is Copy, full name is? Jacob Bernstein. Or no, not yours. <laughs> Everything is Copy, uh, Nora Ephron, scripted and unscripted. Go to HBO, go HBO now, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Uh, you're doing and you've done important work. Well, thank you. Wow. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks. <laughs> One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Sovereign Health System, TD Bank, Bloomfield College, Qualcare Inc., NJM, NJ Best, and by Verizon. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. NJM Insurance Company has been serving New Jersey policyholders for more than 100 years. But just who are NJM's policyholders? There are medical care and emergency management providers service professionals, men and women that move us and the goods and products we use each day, and New Jersey's next generation of leaders, the people who make our state a great place to call home. NJM, we've got New Jersey covered.